events. This is a lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, for the Staging Citizenship module at Estival University College. So I want to give you a very quick um, introduction to the events idea. Um, which is uh, which you'll find in Alain Badiou's book um, on ethics, and I should confess that Adam Adam Badiou is a, a difficult writer to understand sometimes. Um, but I will be giving you my idea of um, of what this contribution, um, the contribution of this book, is to the way we think about things. Um, I, I would very much appreciate it if you um, got some other things from this book, um, and if you would start going in dialogue with his ideas. I mean, one of the main points of the book is um, the way he. Um, refutes a lot of the um, predominant ideas about ethics and if you've studied some ethics you'll know about these so I'll, I won't go through the actual um, uh, systems themselves I'm hoping you know a little bit about them um, but I will definitely go through the way he refutes them so let's go straight um, straight on to it um, his problem with um, his problem with the idea of utilitarianism which is a standard um, um, form of ethics in um, in Europe um, started off by Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill in Britain um, where the idea is that a good action is defined as the one which brings greatest pleasure and happiness to the greatest number of people um, now this uh, this idea of utilitarianism is um, is actually designed to be a political as well as an ethical um, maxim. It's uh, it protects institutions and societies. Uh, it's and, and it gives practical reasons. It, I, I to me it's difficult to know what what is so ethical about this. I can see how it can give you a practical way of um, of, of solving your um, problems, but. Does it make you a good person if you are able to make these practical decisions? Um, so, um, and, and this is certainly the way the philosophers who um, who the first utilitarians actually thought of it, it as a political project. Um, they actually put out a um, a rhyme for um, helping people to rem to remember what they should be doing when they're um, when they're trying to solve problems. The the idea is there is a situation, and here is the way you solve the situation in the best possible way, so that most people are happy. Problems are with this is that it defines goodness or good um, or morality as a, a responsible citizen. It obliges people rather than empowers them and listens to them. So I'm worried that it's not going to, or at least bad Jews maybe are worried that it's not going to produce democratic citizens, but people who don't cause problems or don't uh, or don't um, rock the boat. And the perhaps large problem that is that it's actually difficult to be a good person in an evil world, and there's nothing in utilitarianism that says that you should return the the entrance ticket, that you should return the problem, and that you should say, well, we're already in a difficult situation, so maybe we should change the situation rather than live with it. Um, it just says you have to live with this situation. Why don't you do so with a bare minimum um, of of damage? So um, we should not be changing the evil world with um, in utilitarianism. We should make it livable, um, and that's the kind of way. And that's what, that is a method of keeping um, revolution back in many ways. The second um, ethical um, system which everyone seems to um, use in um, in ethical textbooks is Kant's um, duty theory. I have a lot of time for Kant's duty theory, but not the way he actually applied uh, applied it. The idea, uh, Kant's idea is that um, people are free, so um, it would be Ill illogical to use your freedom to withdraw freedom because that's a self-contradiction. So um, since people are the locus of freedom, then um, then you have to make rules which do not compromise on the locus of freedom because like I say that would be a self-contradiction it's a perfectly rational system um, and he, he says therefore you've got to make rules that um, that are not self-contradictory first and foremost um, so for example if you say it's okay to break promises then you're saying well there's no such thing as promises and unless you want to get rid of the institution of promises then you have to therefore keep them notice the the word institution snuck in there, and it does in that, um, Kant's philosophy the way it's actually applied by Kant. Um, he just assumes that we do want to keep these institutions. But again, just like with utilitarianism, there's nothing to say that um, that these institutions are worth keeping. Um, so again, it's a conservative, we need to continue the way we've always been um, system. 
people should be rational people should be predictable people should be governable and um and and the way Kant um presents this theory is that you mustn't have any outbursts of emotion or, or art or creativity um because those are sources of irrationality and therefore they are um and, and therefore they are immoral so again just like mill Kant um slides morality back into a rational theory in, a, in an attempt to make a rational theory of um, of morality he rules out emotions as um as good no, emotions are not a source of goodness the only thing that can be a source of goodness is um is rationality for kant and that's again problematic because we we all know that there are some feelings that um where where we want to be they make us the person we the kind of person we want to be um and some irrational hunches where we feel look back on those moments where we think that was that was the that was me that was a good version of me that had that hunch that was a good version of me that had those emotions i wanted to react I, in the future i'd like to react as i did in there even when that reaction is an emotional one so there's a problem with Kant's theory as well. And the third one is the um, the faces of Emmanuel Levinas. Levinas's idea is that is, um, if you um, if you if you're in a situation, in order to make a moral response, you need to make a response that means that you can face up to the people. You can you're not going to regret it afterwards when you are face to face with the people that you've affected with your um, with your actions. That the um, the face of other people has an appeal to us, and that we are responsible to other people. Wittgenstein actually had um, the same idea. Um, he advised his doctor friend to look at the faces of his patients because it motivates us to to act well. It motivates us to make a difference in life and um and and it's uh, so we could say that um where um where where utilitarianism um enables us to make good decisions in a system and kant's system um enables us to um make rules for ourselves in in keeping with the situation, Levinas actually motivates us to this situation, motivates us to, to give an ethical action in this situation. It's all about the psychology. It's all about the motivation. Um, so looking at people's faces motivates us to altruism and makes us um, and makes us able to live together with each other um, without, again, without rocking the boat. The problem that Badiou has with this is that there's no theory of distribution um, into it. And so we all know that there are some exotic strangers that we actually meet and immediately like, or that we want to, we go to exotic countries in order to, um, in order to experience how differently they live um, as a way of um, understanding that we could live differently, we could live differently as well. But there are also situations where the the way other people live just makes us um is just distasteful to us um gives us revulsion rather than um rather than um love um, there can be too many faces in some situations um there are good and bad um foreigners in the um immigration debates in um that have been rocking europe the past few years um so what are we going to do with the difficult other um, uh, over against the the good other, or the exotic, or the appealing other? And again, Livinas has no no real answer to this question, according to Badiou. Um, and again, he doesn't pose this question either. He assumes that we'll do well when we are confronted with all these questions. Um, so it's not as much. Uh, um, a, once again, it's not as much um, a confrontation with Levinas as a confrontation with the way Levinas is applied. Yes, we need to do well uh, um, in the face of other people, or especially in the face of other people's suffering. We need to act well. Um, but um, but who are we faced with when we are faced with these other people? Badiou contrasts these um, these ethical systems with the idea of the event. Um, the event is um, does exactly what he um, what the others did not do, which is to say, it um, opens for their for a revolutionary situation, opens for a completely different way of doing things, for a change in the um, in the way of life that we're living, rather than a good or bad action within that way of life. 
Um, a good a good summary of um, the events is um, deface the currency, which was what the um, the Delphic um, oracle said to Diogenes, the Cynic philosopher, when he when he asked how he should live, which is to say, well, it's been interpreted as to say, um, don't just use the concepts and the terms and the um, problems that have been given you. Think differently, act differently, live differently. And how are we going to do that? Well, the event, um, an, an event has happened in our lives in the world when there are new definitions that it gives us. There are new ways of life, um, new distributions, dif new, different people, different groups of people to take consideration of. Um, and um, it talks about, specifically because it talks about distributions, it talks about politics, not just ethics. Um, and crucially, um, the idea is that once an event has happened, you have to be faithful to that event rather than obedient to some kind of rule. Um, faithfulness to the spirit of the event um, and, and open for the new definitions and the new ways of life that this event is, um, is starting out rather than asking according to the old definitions and the old measuring sticks whether this is a good thing or not um, go with it and see and see where it leads you and see whether there are new measuring sticks that it gives you so the event is in, is um, in many ways similar to what we've been saying about um, ritual notice that um, that just like ritual event starts um, opens for new definitions it starts new ways of life um, new negotiations and, and and new ways of looking at the world just like um, rituals um, give new names to people give new statuses and roles and definitions of the way the way we're going to live together um, the event gives us also a new um, a new world to live in and um, and so we're going to have to look through um, our history and our lives and find out whether we know of any events that have um, taken place and whether they are worth being faithful to. Because ultimately it's your choice which event you're going to be faithful to and whether you're going to be, treat something as a, an event that you want to be faithful to. You don't have to listen to Badiou. You don't have to listen to any of the ethical things but you, because you are the one that actually is responsible for the way you approach your future.